Okay, so I've got our sword, and you can see that I've gone in and done some face extrusions to get this pixelated look to it. And that's really cool and great, but if we're going to be using this for 3D printing, we have to make sure that it's really clean geometry. And you can see that this extrusion process has introduced some really thin edges or non-connected edges, which is not going to play very well with the 3D printer. As you can see here, these two corners, although the model is watertight at this point, which means that there are no open edges, you can see that basically it's an infinitely thin edge right there. And the, the 3D printer is going to have a hard time dealing with that. Additionally, over here, we can see that as part of the extrusion process that I have uh, faces that are very close to each other. You can see if I pull off this vertex that there is a crease that goes down into the geometry there and there's a bunch of extra faces. We're gonna have to clean all of these things up because when we get to the 3D printing process, these types of really thin edges and coplanar vertices and faces are not going to go over well with the 3D printer. So this video is going to be about fixing all of those uh, considerations. Technically, they're not errors, but they are problems that were definitely introduced uh, in the face extrusion process. So what I've done is I've selected the two inner edges, and I've just done an edge chamfer. I'm going to go ahead and select all of the interior polygons there that were uh, created as part of that edge chamfer. And I now basically have a hole in the geometry I can see through to the other side. So I'll go ahead and select these edges, or better yet, since it's an open um, edge, I can bridge the edges. So if I go from edge to edge there. So now I've basically filled in the gap that was present there. And we have to do this at all of the different places where all of the corners meet. We actually have to add a little bit of geometry there, something that can actually be printed by the 3D printer. So what I'm doing here is I'm just inspecting all of the different types of geometry that I'm going to have to be working on and make sure that I have all of the vertices selected so that I can do these edits en masse and so that they're all the same. That's the advantage of doing it all together is I find all the vertices that I need to change and I'm going to do it all together. So I can see that all of those edges have been chamfered properly and now we can go in and start deleting them. This process will take a little bit of time, but it's going to be time well spent because we're going to know for certain that we have a watertight piece of geometry. So we're going to fast forward through this part and I'll come back when we talk about the next steps. Now, if we take a look at all of these edges that we have to cut and cap, it'd be nice if we could find a faster way to do it, and there is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the faces that we know that we want to delete. And I'm just going to go ahead and click through these here and make sure that I get all of the faces that we want to get rid of and create a new piece of geometry in there. I'm going to delete them. Now, I have all of these open holes in 
the sword. Let me grab these faces. I forgot to grab those. Now there's a faster way that we can generate all that geometry that we need to create. So what I'm going to do, just making sure that I have all of the extra faces deleted that I needed to. Now that I have all of the faces deleted that I need to have deleted, I'm going to go into border mode and I'm just going to select all of the open borders that are on this mesh and I'm going to choose the cap command. Now this is nice because I have all of these open edges that are basically a hole in the geometry and when I choose cap it just automatically creates all the polygons. Now the only thing I have to fix is the proper edge alignment and you can see me doing that here. I'm in edge create mode and I'm just creating an edge that bridges the uh, gap between the two upper vertices and that reorients all of the polygons that are present into the proper orientation and gets them aligned and their faces facing the right direction. So it's a really fast and easy way to do this process as opposed to going in and creating polygons at each place. I'll just do the same thing here. I'm going to do border, cap, and you can see it creates a mess of polygons there. I go into edge, create the edge, and I'll just create an edge that bridges the gap between the vertices at the top. I'll repeat this process through all of the open borders that are currently on the sword. When it comes to an edge like this, you can see that I've, I've chamfered the top edges but not the edges all the way down the side. I'm a little bit of a stickler for this type of stuff. I, I want this all to be as even as possible. So I'm going to go in here and do a little bit of manual editing. I'm going to uh, chamfer this corner edge all the way down and then I'm just going to do vertex welding and weld those vertices in there so that I have uh, a corner that goes all the way down. I don't have an extra triangle in there. Probably really wouldn't hurt that much in the 3D printing process, but this is more of a preference, a modeling preference of my own. I generally just like to have as much clean geometry as possible, and if everything is a quad, I generally have more luck with that. So I'm going to take the extra few minutes that it's going to take to go in and do all of these corners like this all the way down. Okay, now that we've gotten this far, it's time to stop and check our work. It's nice that 3ds Max gives us a, a tool to do this. It's called XView. It's in the viewport label. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to geometry check our object. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for open edges. And what this can do is this will go in and look at any open edges. And another way to explain an open edge is an unwelded vertex or an edge with an unwelded vertex. So when I'm looking at this, I'll go X view and I'll do uh, open edges here. And it says I have 70 open edges. Now I expect open edges along the bottom because there are no um, edges there or there's no polygons on the bottom. So every edge along the bottom is going to be open. That's fine. Uh, I'm really looking to see where the other open edges are located to see if there's any problems here. So. All of the open edges are highlighted in green, and I can see that. And when I look at it on an angle, I can see that there's no open edges there. So that's good. Let's check for something else. Let's check for overlapping faces. Now, this is where I have a different problem. You remember when I did the face extrusions, um, I have some overlapping faces, and those are things that we want, definitely want to avoid in the 3D printing process. So you can see wherever I have a highlighted piece of geometry here, those contain faces that are overlapping other faces, or we call them coplanar faces. Those need to be fixed. So we're going to go ahead and figure out how they're overlapping and where they're overlapping, and then we're going to go ahead and fix them. So here's an interesting solution to doing these overlapping faces. You can see when I extruded the light blue polygon, it created overlapping faces uh, on the polygons behind it. So how do I fix that? We're going to construct some geometry that we're going to snap into place. And uh, before we delete any of the faces, we're going to use their vertices to help build new geometry. So I'm going to go into um, Edge here. 
and uh, ignore back facing because I don't want to cut anything else along the back. I'm going to get the cut tool. I'm going to turn on my snaps and we're going to do the midpoint snap of these edges. So I'm going to snap there and I'm doing a cut there and a cut there. So I've added geometry. Get my cut tool back there. There we go. Okay, good. So I've added geometry and we're going to uh, move these vertices down into place. And when I, what I mean by that is we're going to use vertex snap and these vertices of these new edges that I just created, I have our snaps tool on there. We're just going to move that right down to there. Let's go ahead and move. There's the snap there. There's the snap there. There's an extra vertex. It's okay. We will fix that shortly. Snap that down into place there. Okay, so now I have basically the structure on the dark green polygons that I'm going to need. So uh, now I can grab this vertex. Oops. Bring that back here. There we go. I want to grab the vertex of that light green polygon. There we go. Okay, I'll move it out of the way. Oops, just a little bit. There. Okay, so now uh, I can see that um, my geometry is in place. I'm going to go ahead and snap this vertex back into place right there. Okay. And that vertex that's in the back corner there is going to be critical in a few minutes. So I'm going to bring this back out so I can see all of the faces that I need to delete. So I can see back in there. I need to get rid of all of those faces that are down in that crevice. So in polygon mode, really simple. Just go in, delete, go in, delete. Delete. Now, I don't want to delete that. I'm actually looking through the back side there, so I want to be sure not to delete that. Delete that extra polygon there and delete that extra polygon there. So now I have another open hole. This is why I did those first two cuts. Now all I have to do is go back into vertex mode and snap and weld that other vertex back into place. Boom. Now it's welded into place. It's now uh, not just moved into place. It's actually welded into place, which is going to make that uh, watertight. Okay, so they were snapped into place and then I collapsed them and now when I move them, they move as one piece of geometry, which is what we want. So that's how I eliminated the overlapping faces that were behind that extruded geometry. So we'll go ahead and repeat this process. You can see there's several vertices there. Collapse them, and now there's one vertex. Two vertices there. Collapse them, and now it's one vertex. And so now I have completely closed off that opening, reduced or removed the overlapping faces, and this area of the geometry is now good enough for 3D printing. So again, using our XView tools, I can see that I still have some overlapping faces and using the same technique that we just looked at, I'll go ahead and remove all of the overlapping faces so that we don't have that problem uh, with the 3D printer. And that should do it. We have successfully edited all of our uh, geometry. We'll go ahead and turn on X, X view again. We'll take a look for uh, overlapping faces, and we have zero faces, zero overlapping faces. So that means that we don't have any polygons that are backed up on top of one another. Uh, I'm just double checking everywhere to make sure that we have everything that's good. Okay, I think we're good. We have a model that's just about ready to 3D print. Now you remember that you know the bottom side is still open, 
Um, if you look over on our modify command panel, you can see that the symmetry modifier is turned off. So once we're sure that we have all of the topology on the top part of the model good, we'll just turn on the symmetry modifier. And now we have a completely watertight model that is ready for 3D printing. Thank you for watching this video series on how to create a Minecraft sword for 3D printing with 3ds Max. If you've liked what you've seen, please share this video and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. We'll see you in the next video.